The topic of the month for March 2018 is Emergency Procedures Training. In this presentation, we'll discuss recommendations for my work group that studies loss of control. The General Aviation Joint Steering Committee, or GAJSC, is a government industry group that studies GA accidents and makes recommendations for adoption of what they call safety enhancements. One safety enhancement promotes emergency procedures training as a means to reduce fatal general aviation accidents. Scenario-based training is encouraged because it places pilots in realistic, complex situations. Scenario-based training works well for single and multi-engine airplanes, and it's also effective in computer-based training and simulation. Instructors in training study the levels of learning, which are Rote or memorization is useful to gain some knowledge quickly, but rote will only get you so far. For instance, a student might memorize the airspeeds for best rate and best angle of climb, but be hard-pressed to describe the difference between them apart from the fact that one is faster than the other. Understanding the relationship between these speeds and aircraft performance is essential in order to choose which speed to use for which flight environment. Choosing VX for a takeoff with obstructions is an example of applying that understanding to a specific condition. Finally, through correlation of VX, VY, knowledge with climb performance at high density altitudes, engine cooling, and traffic spotting requirements, a pilot may opt to begin a departure climb at VX transition to VY after obstacles are cleared and maintain VY until a safe maneuvering altitude is reached, then transition to cruise climb to improve traffic spotting. Teaching and learning at the correlation level is desired because it represents the highest level of learning. But operating at that level can be a bit tricky for instructors and for their students. Correlative learning takes place when students are able to apply previously acquired knowledge to solving new problems. Instructors strive to put students in realistic, complex situations in a controlled learning environment. Effective emergency procedures training prepares pilots for proper and timely response to hazardous situations. Thus, it's essential that CFIs ensure the safety of flight as their students deal with emergency situations. Correlative learning is often accomplished through scenario-based training that provides realistic, complex problems for students to solve in a controlled environment. All airplane pilots are familiar with turns about a point, one of the basic ground reference maneuvers. Let's take a look at how this maneuver might become part of a training scenario. A training scenario might involve an aerial photography mission. There are a host of considerations to discuss and skills to demonstrate. Photo missions often involve relatively low altitudes, so a review of CFR 91.119 is in order. They rarely occur in the practice area, so emergency landing sites are definitely a consideration. And what about airspace? Will ATC coordination be required? Are there aircraft equipment requirements? And of course, the pilot will be pressured to perform often by someone who is focused on the mission to the exclusion of flight considerations. A thorough pre-flight briefing is essential so that the photographer's expectations don't exceed pilot and aircraft capability. And finally, community relations. Have you planned the mission to cause minimum inconvenience to persons on the ground? A classic multi-engine fatal accident sequence goes like this. The aircraft is climbing after takeoff and the critical engine fails. With climb altitude and airspeed, you're close to VMC minimum control speed. Any reduction in speed or increase in angle of attack is likely to result in an uncommanded yaw and roll toward the dead engine. It's one thing to deal with an event you know is coming with a flight instructor on board for backup and safety. It's quite another problem to deal with an event that catches you by surprise. In these cases, the human startle response may consume precious seconds before action is taken. Losing an engine on takeoff is a very serious event and much safer to practice in a simulator. When practicing for this event in flight, 
Be sure to begin at a safe altitude and establish a hard deck altitude that you'll be at or above throughout the scenario. Losing an engine en route or on approach is less critical because you'll likely have more airspeed and possibly more altitude to deal with, but what if you have to go around? Single engine go arounds and light twins often don't go well and they should be avoided if possible. Planning for the emergency and practicing your response in advance will give you a huge advantage if it happens for real. Practicing emergency scenarios in a simulator or personal computer aviation training device, PCATD, is not only safer, but in many ways it's better. The results of an improper or inadequate response to emergency can be experienced safely, even if a crash is involved. With simulation, emergency scenarios can be allowed to progress much further than in airplanes. Instructors must intervene in the interest of safety when training in an airplane but students can fly the entire event in a simulator. Sims are also more efficient because scenarios can be paused at any time for discussion or reset to the beginning of the scenario to practice the event again. Finally, you don't need a multi-million dollar simulator to get effective training. CFIs are the key to training excellence in airplanes and in sims. Great instructors and great scenario-based training programs equal great training in any aircraft or simulator. Finally, let's explore at least three keys to success that will help you deal with CFI-led scenarios and in real life. First and foremost, plan what you'll do in emergency situations. For takeoff, know the runway length and calculate accelerate stop distance. For multi-engine airplanes, know your best single-engine climb speed, VYSE. This will be your target airspeed after engine failure. Lower than this speed is VSSE, or safe single engine speed. Except for minimum control speed, VMCA demonstrations, commit to maintaining VSSE or higher at all times. For single and multi-engine airplanes, know where you'll go if you can't make it back to the departure airport. Multi-engine pilots should decide in advance whether they'll return to the airport of origin or proceed to a more suitable alternate if an engine is lost after takeoff. Professional crews brief every takeoff, approach, and landing. It's a good idea for any pilot to do the same. Just a quick refresher of what you'll do before you do it can improve your chances that your response will be timely and correct. And finally, practice often with a CFI, and when you do, take advantage of scenario-based training. It's the best preparation for successful emergency response. Please direct any questions to your local FAST team representative. Narration by Bradford Wood, Assistant, National Outreach Manager. There's nothing like the feeling you get when you know you're playing your A game, and in order to do that, you need a good coach. So fly regularly with a CFI who will challenge you to review what you know, explore new horizons, and to always do your best. Of course, you'll have to dedicate time and money to your proficiency program, but it's well worth it for the peace of mind that comes with confidence. Vince Lombardi, the famous football coach, said, Practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. For pilots, that means flying with precision. On course, on altitude, on speed, all the time. Be sure to document your achievement in the Wings Proficiency Program. It's a great way to stay on top of your game and keep your flight review current. Your presence here shows that you are a vital member of our general aviation safety community. The high standards you keep and the examples you set are a great credit to you and to GA. Thank you for attending.